Bonjour tout le monde. Before I begin, I want to address Hurricane Fiona. Our thoughts are with Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic as they deal with the aftermath. The storm is expected to make landfall in Atlantic Canada tomorrow morning and could have significant impacts right across the region, including in parts of eastern Quebec. Anyone in these regions should take proper precautions, monitor the latest weather alerts, and be sure to listen to local authorities. Minister Blair and our team of Atlantic MPs are in close touch with provincial counterparts. The federal government is mobilizing resources to support however needed. So please stay safe. It is a real pleasure and honor to welcome President Yoon to Canada today. We're honored that you've chosen to come to Canada for your first bilateral visit abroad. You and I had the chance to meet in NATO in June, uh, further meet at Her Majesty's funeral, and most recently in the last days at the UN General Assembly. But today, we are further strengthening our relationship as two strong Pacific nations. On confronte tous actuellement de nombreuses crises mondiales, la guerre injustifiable de la Russie en Ukraine, l'inflation, les changements climatiques. Alors, c'est important de travailler avec nos partenaires à travers le monde. C'est ce qu'on a fait ensemble aux Nations Unies plus tôt cette semaine dans plusieurs différents événements, et c'est ce que le président Yoon et moi continuons de faire aujourd'hui. With global inflation, making cost of living a struggle for families all over the world. It's more important than ever that we work together to grow the economy and create jobs, especially good middle-class jobs, including for women, young people, and immigrants. Canada and South Korea have strong trade ties with now seven years of free trade between our economies through the Canada-Korea Free Trade Agreement. This is creating opportunities for businesses on both sides of the Pacific. Both Canada and South Korea are focused on growing our economies in ways that benefit everyone. Le Canada and the Corée du Sud travaillent ensemble to create de bons emplois and une croissance propre. Le Canada is bien placé pour être un fournisseur mondial d'énergie propre durant notre transition vers un monde carboneutre. Aujourd'hui, Le président Yoon et moi avons discuté de moyens de collaborer dans divers domaines. Je pense aux minéraux essentiels, aux batteries pour véhicules électriques et aux technologies émergentes, incluant l'intelligence artificielle. Et dans ce domaine, on constate déjà des bons résultats. Par exemple, plus tôt cette année, notre gouvernement a investi dans un projet historique entre Stellantis et la société sud-coréenne LG Energy Solution pour construire la première installation de fabrication à grande échelle de batteries pour véhicules électriques au Canada. Together, we can create even more opportunities like this, including for Canadian resource workers, auto workers, innovators, and more. Canada and South Korea both have robust innovation ecosystems with strong research and post-secondary ties. We discussed ways that we can collaborate further on the responsible development of artificial intelligence technologies. Collaboration in these entrepreneurial, high-tech, and high-growth sectors will boost Canada's competitive advantage and attract good-paying jobs while it benefits people on both sides of the Pacific. Of course, President Yoon and I also discussed the situation in Ukraine. As two democracies, we firmly condemn Russia's irresponsible and dangerous escalation of his illegal invasion. The democracy du monde entier continue de tenir tête au président Poutine. On est uni dans notre défense de l'ordre international fondé sur des règles. On Monday, as part of our commitment to upholding peace and the rule of law, Canada deployed the naval ship HMCS Vancouver to begin Operation Neon. This deployment will monitor the UN Security Council sanctions designed to pressure North Korea to abandon its weapons of mass destruction program. At a time of growing conflict and uncertainty, we must remain steadfast in our commitment to nuclear deterrence in the Korean, in the Korean Peninsula 
and around the world. President Yoon, my friend, the friendship between our countries is a special friendship forged decades ago through war and continuously upheld by our commitment to peace, stability, and prosperity. 26,000 Canadians served in the Korean War, and we are grateful for the honor you paid these brave service members in the laying of a wreath at the National War Memorial earlier today. Thank you for that. We also have deep people-to-people -people ties with over 200,000 Canadians sharing Korean origins. The Korean community is an essential part of the Canadian family. We witnessed this as 8,000 people gathered to mourn the loss of Toronto Police Constable Andrew Hong at his funeral on Wednesday. L'année prochaine va marquer le 60e anniversaire de l'établissement de liens diplomatiques entre le Canada et la Corée du Sud. Je sais que nos deux pays vont continuer de travailler ensemble pendant de nombreuses années pour défendre la démocratie et la primauté du droit dans la région Indo-Pacifique et à travers le monde et pour créer des emplois et bâtir des économies qui fonctionnent pour tous. Thank you, my friends. Merci, mes amis. Comme ça, Hamnida. And now, happy to turn it over to President Yoon. Thank <laughs> 수교 60주년을 앞두고 양국 관계를 한 차원 더 도약시키기 위해 다양한 협력 방안들을 논의했습니다. 오늘 회담은 팬데믹, 공급망 교란, 기후 변화 등 국제 사회가 복합적인 도전을 맞는 가운데 개최돼서 의미가 더 큽니다. 한국과 캐나다는 양국이 공유하는 핵심 가치와 성과를 바탕으로 향후 긴밀히 협력해 나가기로 했습니다. 먼저 양국 간 경제 안보 공조를 더욱 강화하기로 했습니다. 세계적인 광물 생산국인 캐나다와 반도체 배터리 주요 생산국인 한국은 글로벌 공급망에서 중요한 역할을 담당하고 있습니다. 팬데믹 이후 안정적인 공급망 확보를 위해 양국 정부와 기업 간 광물 자원 분야의 협력 체계를 굳건하게 구축해 나갈 것입니다. 또한 국제 질서 변화에 따른 충격에 적극적으로 대응 나갈 수 있도록 외교 산업 당국 간의 고위급 대화 채널을 통해서 긴밀히 소통해 나갈 예정입니다. 둘째 미래 산업 성장 동력을 함께 창출해 나가기로 했습니다. 인공지능 선진국인 캐나다와 디지털 혁신국인 한국은 글로벌 디지털 전환을 위해 협력해 가기로 약속했습니다. 또한 캐나다와 한국 모두 2050 탄소 중립과 탈탄소 전환을 목표로 선언한 상황에서 청정수소 생산 보급 부분의 각자의 강점을 바탕으로 한 높은 수준의 시너지를 도출해 나가기로 했습니다. 이를 위해 양국 관련 부처 간의 고위급 공동위원회도 한층 더 활성화시켜 나갈 것입니다. 셋째, 수교 60주년을 계기로 해서 인적 문화적 교류를 더욱 증진해 갈 것입니다. 트리도 총리님과 저는 양국 국민 간 오랜 교류, 교류와 유대의 역사가 양국 관계 발전에 든든한 토대가 되었다는 것에 공감했습니다. 이러한 공감대 하에서 내년 수교 60주년을 맞아 풍성한 문화 교류 행사 개최를 추진하고 이어서 2024-2025년을 한국 캐나다 상호 문화 교류의 해로 지정하기로 했습니다. 마지막으로 영내 평화와 번영을 위한 전략적 협력을 양국 간에 더욱 강화하기로 했습니다. 
양국은 날로 고도화되는 북한의 핵미사일 위협에 대한 평가를 공유하고 북한의 비핵화를 위해 긴밀하게 공조해 나가기로 했습니다. 양국이 인도태평양 전략을 수립해 나가는 과정에서 소통을 더욱 확대하기로 했으며 기후변화 등 글로벌 현안 대응에 대해서도 긴밀하게 협력하기로 했습니다. 굳건한 신뢰를 바탕으로 양국이 협력의 성과를 축적해 가길 희망하며 내년 서울에서 트리도 총리님을 뵙기를 고대합니다. 감사합니다. Thank you. We'll now start the question period. We'll be taking four questions. First question. Hi, my name is Jennifer Moon. I'm with Arirang TV in Korea. I'm traveling with the president here. Um, with North Korea having declared um, that they will never give up nuclear weapons and basically enshrining a first strike doctrine into law, my question is to you, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. Um, I'm aware that Canada, with its Operation Neon program as well, uh, is working to um, working for the nuclear deterrence um, of the world and in the region. Um, with tensions rising and with uh, escalating um, tensions in, in, the, uh, in Northeast Asia due to North Korea's ambitions um, regarding nuclear weapons, what is Canada willing to do to, um, to I suppose, persuade North Korea to uh, give up their nuclear weapons? Or do you even think that that is possible at this point? Thank you for your question. Canada has long been extremely concerned with North Korea's uh, belligerence uh, and threats of violence, including nuclear violence. Um, we have long been part of a grouping of nations and allies that have stood very strongly uh, against North Korea's threats, uh, including as you mentioned with uh, uh, military operations uh, under the UN uh, to ensure that the sanctions are being enforced uh, in terms of putting pressure on North Korea. But we're seeing and we're living in a time where totalitarian regimes like North Korea, Korea or Russia for that matter are discovering uh, that um, democracies around the world are not simply going to stand by while they threaten the peace, while those regimes threaten the peace, stability and prosperity. Uh, that has come from so many decades of uh, a rules-based order that was respected. Um, we will continue to stand with our uh, Republic of Korea friends. We will continue to stand with all actors in the region and continue to look for ways that Canada uh, can continue uh, to join in efforts uh, to demonstrate to North Korea that the only path forward uh, for them uh, is through peaceful uh, de-escalation and uh, constructive engagement uh, with neighbors, with the region, and with the world. Next question. Good afternoon. Tonda McCharles with the Toronto Star. Um, Prime Minister, today you appointed a career diplomat as uh, the new Chinese ambassador, and you've signaled that a new and broader Indo-Pacific strategy is coming, but not a China-specific policy. How do you think this is going to help improve Canada-China relations and perhaps to the Korean president? Has Canada left you out of their strategic thinking in this regard? Um, thank you, Tonda. Um, first of all, we have uh, spoken at great length today about the fact that both of us are uh, developing renewed Indo-Pacific strategies and uh, we've committed to uh, continuing to work together closely because as friends, uh, as partners, uh, as countries and peoples who share uh, so many of the same values and outlook uh, for the region and for the world, uh, it makes sense for us to be uh, working together to ensure that as uh, both of us, uh, Northern Pacific nations, uh, we're able uh, to respond to all the ranges of challenges presented uh, by the region. Now, China is certainly a uh, real 
challenging actor in the region. There are areas in which uh, we're going to have to figure out how to work together, like on climate change. There are areas in which we're going to be directly competitive uh, in many uh, economic and trade issues. But there are areas in which we're going to need to continue to challenge China on human rights, uh, on uh, respect for the international rules-based order, uh, and doing that with a nuanced approach uh, that is looking out for the interests of Canadians, the interests of citizens across our democracies, is essential. I think for too long, China and other autocracies have uh, been able to uh, play off uh, neighbors and friends against each other by offering you know, bits of access to uh, their market for this product from this country, but not from the others. Uh, and the time is now where uh, we actually look to coordinate strategically on expecting from all of our trading partners, for example, a high level of environmental uh, responsibility in their goods and their services and their actions, a high level of labor standards and human rights respect. So it doesn't need to be aimed at any particular country. But if we're saying we're going to do more work with like-minded partners who are also concerned about protecting our planet, protecting the well-being of future generations, standing up for human rights and the rights of workers, well, then naturally we get to do an awful lot more together. Uh, ça fait uh, plusieurs, uh, plusieurs mois, même des années, qu'on développe uh, une stratégie pour l'Indo-Pacifique, uh, et c'est pas juste le Canada qui est en train de renouveler ces stratégies. Uh, la Corée du Sud est en train de le faire aussi, et nous avons parlé de comment on peut uh, mieux coordonner et s'aligner, parce qu'on est déjà aligné dans nos valeurs, dans nos préoccupations, uh, dans nos désirs de voir plus de paix, de stabilité et de respect pour uh, uh, les règles uh, internationales uh, dans la région. Donc, nous allons continuer de travailler ensemble et nous allons reconnaître que de plus en plus des pays totalitaires ne sont pas des fournisseurs de biens ou de services qui rencontrent nos attentes et les attentes de nos citoyens au niveau de protection de l'environnement, au niveau de normes du travail, au niveau du respect des droits humains. Et nous pouvons à être des ressources et des partenaires économiques extraordinaires sans euh, devoir euh, être dépendants euh, d'autocratie euh, ou d'États totalitaires comme, euh, comme la Chine ou d'autres. Évidemment, nous allons devoir travailler avec la Chine sur certains enjeux comme les changements climatiques. Nous allons devoir compétitionner avec la Chine sur des enjeux économiques et de commerce, mais aussi Euh, des, des moments où nous allons devoir mettre au défi directement la Chine euh, sur des questions de droits humains, des questions de respect des règles internationales, et nous allons toujours le faire. Following up? Uh, my follow-up um, is actually regarding, we've heard this week many leaks and speculation about what you and your government are going to do on border measures, and uh, it's a billion-dollar industry, a lot of questions being asked. So why can't you be clear about what border measures are going to be lifted, and will mask mandates be a part of that? Every step of the way through the pandemic, um, and now Canada has listened to science, spoken with experts, uh, taken uh, our responsibilities extremely seriously to keep Canadians safe and to make sure uh, we're uh, protecting our economic well-being and building for a stronger future. We will continue to be informed by science on all those decisions, and I can assure you when uh, we have an announcement to make, um, we will let uh, the media know first off. Okay. Uh, à chaque étape dans la pandémie, uh, nous avons basé nos réflexions et nos, uh, nos mesures sur la science, sur les recommandations des experts en santé publique, et nous continuons de faire cela parce que la priorité, c'est toujours de protéger la santé, le bien-être des Canadiens et notre bien-être économique aussi. Uh, je peux vous assurer que dès qu'on aura une annonce à faire, on va vous laisser savoir. Next question. <coughs> 네. <coughs> 연합뉴스 한지훈 기자입니다. 그윤 대통령님께 두 가지 질문 드리겠습니다. 그 5박 6일 순방 동안 너무 고생하셨고요. 근데 캐나다를 굉장히 중시하고 계신다라고 생각을 했던 게 벌써 두 번째 정상회담을 하셨고 
첫 번째 회담보다는 좀 구체화된 성과들을 내신 것 같습니다. 궁금했던 게그 회견문에서 그 우리 정부가 이제 우리 기업들이 캐나다에 투자하고 그래서 일자리를 만들고 하는 부분들이 나오는데 그거에 대해서 이제 상응해서 캐나다로부터 특그 핵심 광물과 관련해서 어떤 이익을 구체적으로 얻을 수 있는지가 조금 더 상세하게 어, 나오지는 않아서 그 부분에 대한 설명을 좀 부탁드리고요. 그리고 트리도 총리님께서 그 기자회견문에서 언급하셨던 함께 우크라이나를 규탄했다라고 하는 부분에 대해서 그 대통령께서도 그 유엔 총회 기조연설에서 그 힘에 의한 현상 변경이나 대량 학살, 대량 살상 무기, 뭐 인권 유린들 언급하셨는데 그 언급을 하시면서 구체적으로 어떤 나라를 염두에 두고 말씀을 하셨는지 좀 궁금하고요. 특별히 북한에 대해서 그 조금 더 구체적으로 언급 안 하신 이유가 있는지도 좀 궁금합니다. 우리 트리도 총리님과는 나토에서 그리고 며칠 전에 또 뉴욕에서 그리고 오늘 이렇게 이제 세 번째 만나고 있습니다. 한국과 캐나다는 국민들 간의 그 서로에 대한 신뢰가 우위가 깊고 또 교류의 역사가 깊기 때문에 그런 거를 기반으로 해서 많은 협력이 가능하다고 생각합니다. 그리고 자유 민주주의 인권 또 보편적 규범을 받아들이는 법치라는 이런 측면에서 가치를 공유하는 국가이기 때문에 안보 또 첨단 과학기술 협력 이런 분야에 있어서 한국과 캐나다는 다른 어떤 나라보다도 긴밀한 협력이 가능할 수 있는 베이스가 있습니다. 일단 그 저는 캐나다와 우리와의 관계에 있어서 가장 중요한 것은 국민들 간의 서로 어떤 신뢰와 이해를 더 깊게 하는 문화 협력이 가장 중요하다고 생각합니다. 지금 캐나다에도 우리 재외동포가 지금 한 30만 명 정도가 계시는데 이 캐나다가 다양한 나라에서 이민 온 분들이 그야말로 자기들의 그 다양한 문화가 그대로 살아 있으면서 이 다양성이 다양성이 포용되는 이런 사회입니다. 그래서 저는 캐나다와 한국 간의 이런 문화 협력을 더욱 강화해서 양국 국민들 간에 더욱 두터운 우위를 갖도록 하는 것을 기본으로 해서 경제와 안보 협력을 강화해 나가려고 합니다. 경제 분야는 제가 어제 토론토 대학에서 AI 관련된 사업 협력 투자에 관한 우리 기업들과 글로벌 기업들의 그리고 토론토 대학 측의 협약서를 체결하는 데 제가 다녀왔습니다만은 우리나라에 내놓으라 하는 최고의 기업들이 전부 캐나다에 투자를 약속하고 계획하고 있습니다. 그만큼 한국은 세계 최대 그 디지털 ICT 국가라고 할수 있습니다. 디지털 기기에 대한 그 사용도나 그 숙련도가 세계에서 가장 높은 나라이기 때문에 디지털 기술뿐만이 아니라 그 축적된 데이터의 양도 엄청납니다. 우리 정부는 지금 디지털 플랫폼 정부를 추진하고 있습니다. 여기서 가장 핵심적인 것은 그러니까 이 디지털 기술과 데이터가 더 높은 가치를 창출하려면 이것이 플랫폼화가 돼야 되는데 여기에 가장 필수적인 것이 가장 중요한 것이 바로 AI 기술입니다. 캐나다와 우리가 이 부분을 협력을 한다면 은 우리의 또 디지털 기술과 데이터 또 캐나다의 AI 딥러닝 기술 이런 것들이 함께 큰 시너지를 낼수 있다고 생각하고 있습니다. 있고 이미 우리 기업들은 그런 판단이 끝난 상태입니다. 그리고 우리가 배터리라든가 양극재 같은 그런 생산과 산업을 가속화시키기 위해서는 공급망이 안정돼야 되고 아까 우리 트리도 총리께서도 언급을 하셨지만 
우리와 가치를 공유하지 않는 국가에 이런 필수적인 소재에 대해서 많이 의존을 하게 된다면 은 우리가 전략적으로 큰 패착을 겪을 수가 있기 때문에 우리와 가치를 공유하는 이 캐나다와 주요 소재와 광물에 대한 안정적인 공급망을 찾는 것은 양국에게 전략적으로 매우 중요한 문제라고 생각합니다. 그리고 뭐 유엔총회 연설과 관련해서는 여러분도 다 아시는 내용이기 때문에 더 이상의 뭐 설명을 안 하셔도 되지 않을까 그렇게 생각이 됩니다. 네. We'll take one last question. 안녕하세요. Bonjour. Alors, euh, Monsieur le Premier ministre, d'abord, j'aimerais vous entendre en français sur euh, la tempête Fiona. On sait que la sécurité civile est sur un pied d'alerte en, en Gaspésie comme euh, aux îles de la Madeleine. Évidemment, euh, nous regardons tous avec euh, un œil très attentif euh, et préoccupé euh, l'arrivée de, de l'ouragan Fiona. Euh, C'est certain que euh, les, euh, les autorités provinciales Uh, ont énormément de ressources et sont uh, sur un pied actif, uh, mais le gouvernement fédéral est là uh, pour uh, toutes les ressources nécessaires en termes de coordonner, en termes d'aider avec, uh, avec les appuis nécessaires. Uh, le ministre Blair, uh, responsable des urgences, uh, est déjà en communication avec tous les différentes autorités uh, responsables et nous allons être là uh, pour aider les gens, mais entre-temps, Uh, on demande à tout le monde de faire attention, uh, d'écouter uh, les consignes de la sécurité publique et des autorités uh, et de, de, de se garder en, en sécurité pendant les, les prochaines 24 heures. Um, obviously, we are watching very carefully uh, the uh, imminent landfall of uh, Hurricane Fiona. Minister Blair has been directly in contact with his counterparts in uh, all the different provinces that uh, could potentially be affected. Uh, we know that the provinces have tremendous resources to uh, support and prepare uh, for this, but it's going to be a bad one. Uh, and that's why uh, the federal government, as we always are, will be there with uh, supports and resources as necessary. We, of course, hope uh, there won't be uh, uh, much needed, but we feel there probably will be, and we will be there for that. But in the meantime, of course, we encourage everyone uh, to stay safe, to listen to the instructions by local authorities, uh, and uh, hang in there for the next uh, 24 hours. J'aimerais vous entendre aussi, M. Trudeau, sur cette demande du président Zelensky de révoquer le droit de veto à Moscou. À l'ONU, ce n'est pas la première fois que c'est évoqué. Qu'est-ce que le Canada en pense? Est-ce que ça devrait se faire rapidement? Bien, on, on est dans une situation assez particulière où euh, l'un des pays responsables de la Fondation des Nations unies, qui siège sur le Conseil de sécurité permanent des Nations unies, est maintenant en violation flagrante des principes les plus fondamentaux de ces Nations unies, de la charte, des valeurs, des, 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 des accords et des règles établis par les Nations unies. C'est une situation sans précédent. C'est une situation qui va s'aggraver avec ces, ces référendats entièrement illégitimes que la Russie est en train de lancer euh, dans les secteurs occupés de l'Ukraine. Si on y pense, ils sont en train de préparer l'annexation des régions euh, occupées de l'Ukraine pour qu'ils puissent accuser les, les Ukrainiens d'envahir les territoires russes, quand la réalité, c'est qu'ils sont en train de défendre leur patrie, leur territoire leur souveraineté. C'est extrêmement inquiétant et absolument inacceptable ce que la Russie est en train de faire. Et d'ailleurs, avec le président Yoon et bien d'autres leaders cette semaine, nous avons beaucoup parlé de comment nous devons être encore plus fermes et encore plus présents à travers le monde pour condamner ce que la Russie est en train de faire. Parce que si elle arrive à faire ça à l'Ukraine, mais il y a énormément de petits pays dans le monde qui pourraient s'inquiéter de ce que leurs voisins plus grands pourraient leur faire 
en situation de conflit. C'est un moment de se tenir solidaire pour la défense euh, des règles et des droits à l'international, et c'est exactement ce que nous allons faire. We are in a rather unprecedented situation where one of the founding members of the United Nations, a member of the UN Security Council, permanent representative, is now in total violation of the UN Charter, of its principles, of its values, of everything that the UN stands for. And that is something that uh, the UN as an institution and all of us who are members of it need to take very seriously and think through how uh, we can make sure that the peace and stability for which the UN was created is able to be maintained uh, with the voices of all countries in the world standing up. The, the situation we're facing right now with these sham referenda going on in eastern and southern Ukraine right now uh, is is extraordinarily worrisome. If you think about it, Russia is now running fake referendums in occupied territories so that they can declare annexation of those territories and therefore that Ukrainians, while in fact they are fighting for their homeland, defending their own territory, could be accused by Russia of invading Russia as they take back their homes and villages. The repercussions of this and the concern that countries around the world should feel at this flagrant violation of all the principles and rules around international law is something that uh, we spoke about, something that uh, we've spoken about uh, extensively at the UN this week and that countries around the world are standing up against because uh, the concern that just about any other country has that uh, their neighbors could try a similar something, um, particularly in vulnerable parts of the world, um, is very real for all of us. So the world needs to stand together in solidarity with Ukraine and for the principles that underpin all of our democracies. Thank you. This is what concludes the press conference.